I'm going to call our study session to order tonight for Shelton City Council for April 2nd. Oh, Mike Bond, thank you. Mike, Remember? Mike, Mike, the doors. Um, we'll open with the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor, uh, members of council, and members of the public uh, tonight for the study session. Um, back in January, we had talked a little bit about uh, the master fee schedule and how we wanted to go through the master fee schedule uh, piece by piece and uh, hold work sessions with the council and then bring it back as part of a, a public hearing once council was comfortable with the direction and the reasoning behind um, how the fee schedule is designed and what its purpose is. So we've broken the fee schedule up into three parts. Uh, the first part is the part we're going to talk about tonight is the miscellaneous fees. Uh, the second part will be uh, public works and engineering fees, which we'll have a study session on that April 16th, I believe. And then the uh, third part will be planning and building fees, which is scheduled for May 7th. So tonight with the miscellaneous fees, there are, uh, these are things for charges like um, uh, copying fees, uh, uh, cost for the annual report. There's several deletions in here, and I'll go through a couple of the items. And then I'll have uh, Chief Moody and uh, Director Ziegler uh, go through their items that are part of this miscellaneous packet. Um, as you'll see on the first page, uh, we have the a couple of proposed changes. One of the uh, deletions that we're making to the fee schedule is for uh, the parking lot fees uh, over here in the city lot. They are, there's five or six, I believe, uh, reserved parking spots for different uh, community organizations. Um, but recovery of those fees has been uh, spotty. And uh, at this point, um, we don't think uh, that it's necessary to collect those fees. Uh, it costs more in uh, processing of those fees and uh, getting them into the system, uh, making sure that the fees are paid than it does recovery of the charges. And we can look at this again uh, if, if and when, uh, well, when we get that parking lot paved over there, uh, it'll be nicer with more amenities. Um, and then we can look at reserving spots for uh, various organizations nearby uh, and uh, potentially uh, um, other uh, government organizations that would be able to use that. So if you flip to the second. Can ask a quick question on these things? Absolutely. So, okay. yeah. so I used to rent a parking space a long time ago from the, the thing. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of in my understanding that a lot of people that work downtown, uh, you know, that a lot of the people that work in a lot of the businesses that they uh, had available, they, they could do that. I certainly thought it was more than four or five or six people mm -hmm. that took advantage of that. Is that what you're talking about? How many, uh, that, so you only, rent out four or five, and those are probably the people that work in the buildings or something, at the banks or whatever? Close by, uh, and it may have been a lot more in previous years, but once uh, uh, a lot of the parallel parking uh, along Rail Road <clears throat> and other spots had been provided, uh, the usage has gone down uh, substantially. Yeah, we're uh, no longer giving tickets for people to park out on the thing, and so. Uh, yeah, that's. Uh, well, no, I mean, we do. If, if the if it arose or something, you know, but I mean, it's uh, generally it's not a real enforceable, right? You know, type of a situation. So, did you say after it was all paved, though, we may and if there was more of a need to it? Because as just uh, on my other hat, I am a business owner downtown, mm -hmm. and it would be real nice if all the employees of all the businesses in front of my shop had something like over here to park. Absolutely, and we can we can relook at that uh, when uh, that parking lot is uh, is paved, and uh, um, we have spaces available to rent. We need to we'll need to look at the usage uh, and how many city employees uh, are using that lot, uh, and if and when it fills up on the weekends uh, for uh, the, church, the yeah. church across the street. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. 
uh, just a question. How does this apply to Evergreen Square? Because that is a city-owned parking lot. Yeah, uh, that at that point, uh, we don't rent spaces over at Evergreen Square as far as I know, uh, as far as I've been able to determine. Um, I think uh, if and when we reinstitute a fee uh, for uh, the parking lot here across the street, it would be specific to this lot and not, uh, not the lots fronting the businesses uh, or other parking lots that we may own. There's a there's a deed restriction yeah. on the Evergreen Square that's right. in place that that, um, that doesn't allow the city to to rent out those 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 uh, stalls in yep. in that parking lot at this point. So they're free and open to the public. Makes it pretty darn specific. That's right. So thanks. <laughs> So uh, if you go to the second page here, um, mm -hmm. there are no, uh, no proposed changes. We're keeping the special event permits, uh, permit fee the same as they were uh, previously. Uh, all the other fees, uh, map reproductions uh, uh, and things like that, adoption fees from the animal shelter, uh, those types of things, there are no changes whatsoever. And those fees are um, uh, set to cover the costs of overhead. Um, the other thing we wanted to do, which you'll see in a couple other spaces, particularly when we get to the um, planning and uh, building portion of the master fee schedule discussion, is we wanted to make them even dollar amounts so that they're easy to calculate, easy for everybody to understand, um, and uh, more streamlined. Uh, rather than calculating out uh, everything to the penny, uh, we'll just make them, make them even fees. Yep, I'm going to bring this up. It's not related to what's in the schedule. The first page, mm -hmm. the Visa Master Charge chargeback fee. Yes. We've had, I think it was before you came, discussions about um, being able to use credit cards to pay different bills or mm -hmm. even permits, large items. Yes. And I know the discussion has always been, is it worth it? Because mm -hmm. you're getting payment, but you're also paying something. And I just want to bring that up to make sure that maybe Terry is still looking at that to understand that certain areas that might make sense and certain areas that may make sense to, you know, add a charge for use of a part. Yeah, uh, and we are uh, looking at that um, as part of an overall program for uh, permit development um, uh, or uh, efficient permit development where uh, paying online and things like that, either with a debit card or with a credit card, uh, is something that uh, it ought to be available uh, to the citizens. Uh, if there is a convenience fee with that, uh, it's usually a percentage, and uh, just to cover the cost of the transaction. Um, so I think it's two and a half percent or something like that. Accounting. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we can we will definitely uh, include that when we start using uh, credit cards and online abilities more often, more robustly than we do now. Um, let's see. On the third page here, uh, these uh, um, are. Uh, Director Ziegler's uh, fees, and if he could go over those, I would appreciate it. Absolutely. Um, there's a code enforcement fee that's in conjunction with the police department, and um, there really isn't much history with uh, charging that fee. Um, typically, uh, it, there would be a citation or a fine involved in that, and that the and that's the enforcement piece of it. I, I think Chief Moody might be able to. Um, describe that a little more succinctly at this point, but we haven't, in my involvement with code enforcement, we weren't charging that fee. Um, it would come through a fine or, or, a, um, or a citation uh, and that our investigation or whatnot, if it's egregious, if it's an abatement or something like that, then we're charging staff time to abate the structure and, and, cr and perform those duties, but the actual um, feed for the site visit investigation we haven't charged in the past, so we're proposing deletion of that. I don't see that on this Deal. page. <laughs> Pardon me? Where, where, where is that? Code page? enforcement page three, it's line 98. It says delete the fee here. Well, yours aren't numbered. It would be that one right there. It says code enforcement fee. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not in red, so. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, sorry about that. Um, the other fees here for the meeting space um, and uh, coffee service and things like that are just simply to uh, cover the cost of overhead. Excuse me, I jumped ahead. Yeah, exactly. Um, so those are civic center rental fees for the uh, rooms outside of this room, the main room, banquet room, the three meeting rooms, coffee service, kitchen, those. We, we discussed that in our budget preparation meetings late last year. 
uh, I presented some scenarios that would, um, if we maintained the usage that we've seen over the last several years, what kind of fees would uh, essentially equate to a cost recovery um, to provide these services for staff and materials. So that's what these, uh, these rates would include. And then we would eliminate the uh, event, uh, the alcohol uh, event fee of $100 because we have eliminated that from our policy. Okay. Any question? Yeah. Question. Are we, at the time we removed the alcohol, you still had some events scheduled Correct. that were grandfathered in? Correct. Are those all gone? They're all done. Yeah. And just a clarification on the code enforcement fee, we're foregoing a fee for a, uh, I, uh, an infraction. Is that is that the conversation? No, the investigation or the site visit. Right. It, that fee. If there's an infraction or a citation, then that would there would be. That would be sixty-seven dollars. No, that'd be a fine of. About a thousand dollars. For okay. the nuisance violation type of thing. Yes. Um, for I don't know the history of this fee, but it, it looked like we just charged a fee at some point for code enforcement to go out and do an inspection or look at sites, and since our code enforcement will also do on view activity as well as complaint driven activity. Right. And we haven't charged that fee for the last five years that I'm aware of. It just makes more sense to not put that in there because if you are charged with an allegation against the code, you're going to get fines levied towards you anyways. Understand. Um, you know, it looks to me like the history of that was typical of a reinspection fee, I guess you could say. Um, but it wouldn't be applicable to this type of code enforcement activity. It may be applicable to a planning activity and through building and planning more than it would be applicable through code enforcement. And sorry, uh, just so I have this completely straight. So then a code violation, the, the financial aspect of it, um, it's a sliding scale. It could be up to yes. this much money depending on the level of infraction then. Depending There's on not the a courts. flat. It depends on the courts as well. And all of the things that are involved in, um, in that. Yes, understand. Yeah, I think that's typically a nuisance mm -hmm. part of the code, not not necessarily building code or something like a building code. And everything we try to get voluntary compliance with anyway. So there's there's not an infraction because that can that can tend to slow down <laughs> the, the corrective action. If if you place a place a fine or a fee on somebody, mm -hmm. that just they most likely have scenario in their life uh, or their property that that leads to <laughs> to the issue that we're dealing with essence up front. So if they're paying a fee or paying a fine, they might not have those resources to put into cleaning up or, or taking care of that infraction. So if they if we can put those resources to voluntary compliance, um, they can put those resources to, to fixing that. Mm -hmm. Hopefully we come to a quicker resolution, I guess, to that infraction. I understand. Thank you. I have a quick question for Mark. Um, didn't we raise, when we raised the meeting rooms especially the, the big room out here. Wasn't it from 50 to 75, right? They have not been raised. They have not been raised yet. They have not been raised. That was proposed um, in okay, late last proposed. year in the okay. fee schedule. So these are the same fees that we proposed at that time. Um, we brought the fee schedule back and it was, okay. it was, it was pushed back to later I was later just wondering date. if you've yeah. noticed any kind of a significant drop in, yeah. in rentals. Not but, at this point. No. Um, okay. We may have seen, a bit of a drop in in the events that serve alcohol and yeah certainly yeah. certainly is the case but um we haven't been able to track that associated with the fee but we certainly will have some data once uh if if it's adopted i should say yeah. and then uh, the last portion is are the uh, miscellaneous fees managed by the police department and i'll turn that over to chief Moody. so most of the fees surround animal control and if we've kept them status quo um, we raised them a couple of years ago, and we didn't see any need to raise them at this point. So those are the adoption fees, rabies, et cetera, for the animal control portion. Um, where we did, where we will be making some changes, hopefully it's in your lines, is fingerprint fee cards 128. So historically, we have used the hard fingerprint cards, the actual cards themselves rolling in ink. Those went bye-bye a long time ago. We're one of the few agencies around that still rolls ink that way. Uh, we wrote a grant and we'll be receiving what's called a live scan machine. Um, it's an automated fingerprinting machine. 
with no ink, no hard paper. Basically, you roll it and send it where you want to send it. Um, we did some evaluation of what it costs to do fingerprinting and the time it takes to fingerprint and the fees associated with the machine. Um, tum an example is Tumwater. If somebody goes to the school district and wants to volunteer at the school district or be staff at the school district, they send them all the way to Tumwater to get fingerprinting and charge them $80 in Tumwater to get fingerprinting. So I had some conversations with the district and what we've looked at is those are the closest area we could find. The sheriff's office doesn't do it on live scan. That's why they send them to Tumwater. So we looked at what it would cost our staff time and et cetera, and we reasonably believe $60 would be fine for that. Question on that, Chief? Yes, sir. Um, do you have to be a licensed fingerprint technician to be able to operate the machine or can no. anybody operate it? No. And also, Councilmember Kranz has volunteered to be the first person to be fingerprinted with the new machine. <laughs> why exactly. why not? So, so. Be happy to be there for that. We can give. We can even give him training and how to fingerprint himself. How's that? <laughs> Sounds great. <laughs> All right. So, anyways, that's the live scan one. Um, the taxi um, fee standard. Basically, it just balances out with the same fees for a taxi because taxi cab drivers license they have to come in annually and get fingerprinted for that as well. Uh, we noticed through in going through all the fees that there there wasn't a lot of un, or there's several areas of a lack of uniformity where we were charging according to an RCW or something like that. Another part of the city would be charging according to a policy. So we agreed to uniformity in our fee schedule. So whatever you pay for a paper copy upstairs, you're going to pay for a paper copy downstairs. Um, so this just aligns all of that into one. Uh, and we did our research on that through WCIA as well as through um, WASPIC. And I think the only other change other than standardizing was a weapons permit fees. And that just changes per the state guidelines. We don't have a choice. Um, when they up the concealed weapons permit fees, we have to up the, it's set through the state. And I'd be happy to answer any questions. Question mm -hmm. on, on the uh, impound fees for dog. Mm -hmm. The first, second, and third, is that per year, per dog, or, you know, over the history? Annually. It's annually. It's so spelled out in there annually, okay. yes. So if they're... They if they're habitual, their dog gets out every month, then the cost will go up incrementally if we have to keep using staff time to track it down. And as an offender of forgetting to renew my dog license... <laughs> <laughs> You'll be the second person fingerprinted? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Is there any easy way to send out reminders on that, or, or do you think that's cost effective? Or you know, that's something I'm sure we can explore. Jeff has talked about putting things into the utility bills. I'm sure that's something that can be. I can talk to Andy. We can do some online reminders. I'm more than happy to if put something together. Only yeah. if it's cost effective. And it's a good point. It is a good point because oftentimes the people that have had them in the past just forget to renew them annually. And whether that's us sending out billings annually or whether that's putting something out in the news, absolutely we'll look at that. And we'll, in fact, we'll make a house call to you, Mayor, if need be. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the things we're, uh, that we're going to do eventually uh, with those types of uh, fees is uh, to have an automated email system uh, that will email you uh, kind of like your dentist does, um, which... I don't necessarily like getting those from my dentist, but you know, um, those types of things that we'll be able to implement to uh, to make it easier for uh, both city staff and the residents, uh, make sure they get things taken care of. And it's not just uh, uh, dog fee, uh, dog licenses, or anything like that. It's uh, the, several things that you have to do annually, like uh, business licenses. Very very similar uh, method to be able to do that to make it easier for everybody. Questions? Mine are easy. <laughs> I have a new one. More general one on public records. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are those pretty much set by are the rates we're using? Are those the ones that are recommended by? So there is a, uh, uh, I don't believe it's an RCW, but it is a Washington Administrative Code, if I'm not mistaken, uh, that says uh, municipalities um, 
can charge up to a set uh, set amount. The state basically sets the amount unless you do a, uh, a full-fledged study to determine what the uh, rates would have to be for your specific municipality in order to do a cost recovery. Um, in my view, uh, and I'd be happy to discuss this, I think using uh, the rates that are set by the state uh, for those types of things lends to more uni uniformity uh, so people know what to expect when they walk in the door. Uh, and it would cost a significant amount of staff time for us to do a, a study in order to justify either a higher or uh, <coughs> potentially a lower rate. But um, the, the cost benefit just isn't, uh, in, isn't worth it in my view. But I'd be happy to discuss that with council if you have different, uh, different way you'd like to go about it. The way, we, the way we arrived at it for the uniformity, there is a section of the RCW that discusses determining actual costs only after notice in public hearing, but then it goes on to explain that most of the agencies do not use that because it's when you just put in their time and staff or time and materials, people really don't know what they're walking into until they get into it. Right. Um, so it recommends through the RCW that an agency do not calculate the actual costs if it has rules or regulations declaring the reasons for doing so would be unduly burdensome. So if we had to go through, like like Jeff said, and calculate, okay, what's it cost us to have a staff person walk over to the copy machine, run a copy through there, what's it cost for the paper, that would be pretty burdensome on a city our size to be able to run a, a study of that nature. So then it outlines what the cost should be if you don't do that. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. One other. Go ahead, Eric. I'd just like to go back to the um, no alcohol. Um, the council didn't didn't decide that decision, and I've been to many, many, many weddings here. You know, so we're now saying you can't have a champagne toast we did this at your own wedding. I mean, I think it was decided by the council. Oh no, it wasn't. I, I recall it that we did decide that. I, I believe we, we decided discussed here. it. I can't remember the exact nature of our decision, but I know it was discussed. I thought it was consensus or recommendation that we drop alcohol. That's my recollection. Yeah. Um, well, we didn't vote on it. So, but I wouldn't book a wedding here if I couldn't have a champagne toast. I think that was one of our discussions was it may limit, um, it, it was kind of the issue of if we, if we could decide ahead of time who could have alcohol exactly. and who may not, but we can't do that. Essentially, so. it's in our rental policy. It's not a policy that was set by the by the council, um, and it's all or nothing. So it's champagne toast or full on kegger. You know, you, you can't you can't really limit that. So and the insurance is the same for somebody. Somebody to have to go out and get their insurance, get their banquet permit, and go through go through those hoops, and which are a added costs as well. And we were just seeing more and more wear and tear, more and more staff turnover. We were having trouble staffing this building. Um, we pay minimum wage. They work till one, two o'clock in the morning, three, three o'clock in the morning, mopping up vomit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it, it's, a, it's a tough prospect to, to, to fill those <laughs> positions and, um, and operate this facility Mark, under those circumstances. Mark and I had numerous discussions with prior city administrators and, and, and commission at the time about providing security as well. This building's an investment for the city and to take care of that investment for the city from a public safety standpoint, I would say if you're going to have alcohol at a facility like this, you require us to be there for security or a licensed bonded security company to do so. That gets cost prohibitive for many smaller folks like a wedding or something like that if they had to hire two officers. That's my problem. Well, yeah, and in our conversation is it wasn't the champagne toast that was causing the problem. It was people right. who have parties that he gets out of hand and things like that. And again, they do make an, a, a non-alcoholic champagne too. So I'd imagine that people could have a non-alcoholic champagne and not tell the bride and groom that it was non-alcoholic. And <laughs> we could probably still get people that wanted a toast or do a symbol of a toast and they not even know what you put in their glass. So I think I, I lean towards, listen, Stop laughing. I lean towards agreeing with that this facility, the wear and tear, the care, that there are probably other wedding places, you know, so I, I, I don't know that we officially voted on it, but I would lean to where I think basically alcohol free will save us a lot more time and money. So, but I do not remember if we really voted on that issue or not, but I support probably alcohol free. Okay. Anything else? So that's all I had. On that note, 
I have one one item in chief. Uh, I'm, I have no questions of the chief. So if you want to sit down, and <laughs> <laughs> sit down. <laughs> um, I, not necessarily want to know if I want to debate this this evening, but some questions that I kind of wrote down as I was reviewing through this. Um, forgive me on the history here, but why um, why do we call out sexually or sexually oriented businesses? in the business licensing category as a separate business type. Mm -hmm. I'm, and I'm curious why, why that is that way and why they wouldn't just be like, what is a sexually oriented business? I think I can guess, but uh, according to our city code, it's not defined. Right. Um, so that is uh, uh, very typical for cities and counties uh, to do that because there are specific uh, state regulations about where they can be cited. Um, distances from uh, houses of worship, uh, schools, those types of things. Um, takes a little bit more work on uh, staff time in order to verify those things as part of the business license process, um, that they're uh, located in a place where it's uh, uh, applicable. Um, that's why uh, they're called out a little bit differently. Um, that is something that we will have to define in the city code, and that's one of the things that I've noted uh, in my notes when we go through the code rewrite uh, starting later this year, um, that we will uh, define those things um, f in that instance probably fairly narrowly. But that's uh, going to be up for council debate and discussion. That is all. Okay. That's what you're going to end with? That's I'm good. <laughs> so uh, just generally, uh, this one, this uh, work session on the master fee schedule, uh, relatively short, not, uh, not a whole lot of things in here. The two remaining work sessions that we have scheduled um, will go uh, quite a bit more in depth uh, to the various, uh, various pieces and parts of the uh, fee schedule so the council can see how those are put together. Uh, we wanted to start off with this one to um, get you into that uh, that role of looking at these fees, um, and uh, uh, kind of introduce introduce the topic to council. But the overall philosophy that we're proceeding with when we look at these uh, fees is to simplify, and I think uh, you can see it in some parts that we've done that. Um, make the uh, the dollar amounts, of course, even. Like I said, to keep it uh, simple, anybody can calculate what their fees are going to be. Um, and to uh, reduce and, uh, and simplify the uh, entire process for not only city staff, but also for our customers. Uh, when they walk into the door, they know what to expect. And that's the direction we're proceeding with. Um, I'd be happy to answer any questions or uh, uh, anything else that the council has. Okay, thanks, Jeff. Any questions for city manager? Hearing none, we'll adjourn the study session.